Good morning. Happy Saturday to you ladies. It is a pleasure to rise and shine. And as the song said, give God the glory, glory. Um, excited to come on this morning. Just had some things that, that this is usually not planned. Um, if God places something on my heart, then I come on and I share it. And so that's what I'm going to immediately jump into because I want to be sensitive to your time this morning. First, Allow me to start by saying that I'm going to be covering prayer this morning, okay? Well, before we went out uh, with COVID, good morning, Daisy, beautiful woman of God. It's a pleasure to see you. Uh, before we went out um, uh, with COVID um, at the church, the wildflowers were reading, we were reading this book, Lord, Teach Me to Pray 28 Days. And so it has an exercise for you every day, day one, day two. And this was written by Kay Arthur, okay? Great book. I'm an avid reader, by the way. Here again, you guys have heard me say, was not always this way. But if you pray and ask God uh, to increase your appetite for things, I guarantee you, especially those things uh, um, of him, he said, ask and you shall receive. All right. So first thing I want to do um, is talk about today praying the scriptures. Um, on page uh, 34, what Kay does is she breaks down um, um, the 23rd Psalm. No, she breaks down the Lord's Prayer. I'm sorry. The Lord is, uh, no, no, our Father who art in heaven. I'm all over the place, so please forgive me. Um, our Father who art in heaven, okay? And so she classifies this as an index uh, prayer. Uh, she's referencing Matthew 6. 9 through 13. And what she does, and I know that sometimes this is hard to see. Good morning, Beverly. Good morning. I pray that you all have some great things on the docket today, and you're starting with Christ Jesus first and foremost. You do that, nothing else matters. But anyway, she is, um, let me bring my mind back into submission because I'm like all over the place. I got so much I want to say. I'm bouncing all over the place. All right. Um, the first verse starts with our father who art in heaven. And what she does is she breaks this down and she says that first sentence is one of worship. Okay. The next she says, your kingdom come. That is an allegiance to God. Bessie, good morning, mighty woman of God. It is a pleasure to see you. A pleasure to see you. Hey, Jessica. And um, Sister Wiggins first let Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's Bessie. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought that was um, my aunt who is a first lady. All right. Let me get back on topic. So she breaks down um, the seven verses and your kingdom come is an allegiance to God. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is submission to God. Give us this day our daily bread. When we speak that, we're saying, God, it is a petition and provision uh, uh, request. And, give us, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. This is about confession and forgiveness. And here again, it's in the book. She breaks those down, makes it clear. Okay, Because if you recall the disciples, they're asking Jesus to teach us how to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray. Apparently, we've got something off. Teach us how to pray. And so in this index prayer, what Jesus is doing is he's giving you some basic components that should be included in your prayers. Okay, we get on to verse six. It says, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that one we're looking, we're seeking God's watchfulness and deliverance. And finally, it says, and yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That passage, that particular uh, part of the scripture is about worship. Okay? So, the components of the prayer here, as outlined in this book, and I will say that I agree with her, the first thing you're doing is you're opening the prayer with worship. From there, you're talking about your allegiance to God. From there, it's submission to God. From there, it's petition and provision. The next one is confession and forgiveness. The next one is watchfulness and deliverance. And finally, you end the prayer talking about worship. Here again, talking about Lord, teach me to pray. Good morning, Sister Valinda. Um, 
and it's outlined within the book, the components of the prayer. All right. So what I want to do is now ask you if you have a moment to turn over to Psalm 51. I just I was reading that this morning and I said, you know what, let me let me go and, and explain praying the scriptures and what exactly that looks like. So grab your phones, grab your Bibles, whatever. We're going to pray that psalm together. And I'm just going to give you an example of praying the scriptures. Also, if you turn to Luke, uh, Luke 4, 16 and 31, we can see where Jesus um, goes in the temple. And what does he do? He begins to speak from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. That's a lot of what was happening. Because remember, they didn't have the Bible then. All they had, not the full Bible, all they had was just the old covenant. Okay. And so really when they would get in the synagogue and convene and chat and, and fellowship, they would be reading the old covenant. Okay. So, and like I said, you'll see an example of that in Luke 4, 16 through 31. So I've got all these different kind of Bibles. I'm just going to show you. This one is a five love language Bible. Okay. Um, and this one is, um, um, I've received this, purchased it when I went to a conference once um, to learn about the different love languages. But let me jump in. If I was sitting and, well, this morning, when I was sitting, I was praying this passage, Psalm 51. And I opened it up and follow along with me and you'll kind of see how when it's time to pray the scriptures, how easy it is. Okay. It opens up and the first verse says, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Now, you can speak it that way, one for one, word for word. But for me, I like to add on. And so if I'm praying this, here's how I'm praying it. Merciful God, I come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking you for another day. I thank you, O oh God, for your mercy that is on me and is on my family, that is in my life. I thank you for that mercy, O oh God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your compassion, your great compassion, you have blotted out all of my sins. And because you have blotted out all of my sins, I get to come and sit at your feet just as Mary sat at your feet when you taught her, O oh God. Lord God, help me not to be busy like Martha, running around distracted, oh God, but help me to be effective for your kingdom. All right, that's just the first verse. What I did was I added to, because I know the different stories and the different things that are occurring in the Bible, what this particular, this first verse is talking about is mercy. It's talking about God's unfailing love. It's talking about compassion and it's talking about God blotting out my sins. He's blotted out. He doesn't see me through. He doesn't see uh, uh, my sinful ways. He sees me through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it is that blood, that portion that allows me to come to him. And so because it allows me to come to him, it says that your compassion has blotted out my sins. All right. Let's go to the second verse. The second verse of Psalm 51 reads, wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin. All right. If I'm going to pray this scripture, this, this passage of scripture back to God, I'm going to say, spirit of God, I know that I have fallen short, fallen short in so many different ways. So I need you to wash me clean of my guilt Wash me clean of all of my sins, O oh God, and purify me as I read your word, as I study your word, as I walk in righteousness, as I surrender my life to you, dear God. Okay, that's the second verse. All I did was just prime it with the second passage, the second verse that says, wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin. Is this making sense to you all when it's time to pray the scriptures, to give God back his word, 
Just as we saw Jesus praying the scriptures in Luke 4, 16 and 31, when he's reading Isaiah, he's reading from the book of Isaiah in that passage. Okay. Are you all with me? I want to make sure that, that I'm, that I'm making sense. And if you've got questions, speak them. Let, let, let's talk about those questions this morning. If you have any, I know some of you like to message me, um, and that's fine. That that that's fine, definitely. As long as you're getting your answers. All right, good deal. Let's move forward into the third part of this. It says, "For I recognize my rebellion; it haunts me day and night." So I want you to think about the times that you've done something. And so what I do is I begin to internalize and personalize this, and I think. I know that they say that I can grieve the Holy Spirit. I know they say that I can hurt the Holy Spirit and he has feelings and a heart. And so I read this, it says, I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. I'm thinking about a moment when my child has rebelled against me and I've told uh, Justin to do something, I've told uh, Zoe to do something and they rebel. And in that moment, I think about how hurt I am because they, 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 I told them to do one thing and they rebelled and did something different. So as I turn my heart to God, I say, God, I recognize, I recognize that, that, that I have rebelled against you. And in that rebellion, sometimes it does haunt me. You know, I'll give you an example. When I, uh, there are moments even as a woman that is in love with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, even as a woman that is never alone, because I've always got three people with me at all times, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I still find myself wrestling at moments, especially when I reflect back on my life and my transgressions against God. But I, I know that I am forgiven. I know that I am pardoned of those things. But I'm still at a moment where I recognize, oh my God, I can't believe that I did this or I can't believe that I did that. That In that moment is when verse 3 comes to life because there are moments when my yesterdays will attempt to haunt me. But instead... I turn that thing and I turn it and I say, Spirit of God, I thank you that you are merciful and you have forgiven me of my rebellious ways. So help me to stay on the straight and narrow. Help me to stay, Lord God, along the narrow way as I worship you, as I become that beacon of light that shines, that shines in dark places, you know? All right. Let's jump down to four. And we're not going to go through this entire passage, but I just want you to understand just how easy it is to pray to God, to turn open and turn and open the Psalms and, and to pray. So let's jump down there um, to, to, to uh, Psalm 51 and four. It reads, against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You are will be proved right in what you say and your judgment against me is just. So we know that we serve a God that is a just God. He didn't say that I'm not going to trouble the, the, the waters of your life. He did say that here's what you do. If you live a life of surrender unto me, I promise you that I will give you safe passage. So let's make that clear. It is through the tribulation that you are perfected. And I've told you this in the past. When you are going through tribulation, you surround yourself with people that can cheer you through that tribulation. It's not a woe is me mentality because we know that victory rests in the hands of Jesus Christ. And so by faith, if you truly believe that, then that means that you've got your word in your hand, that tells me that you've got your shield of faith, that tells me that you have surrounded your people, yourself with people that are of God, in God, and they want to partner with you through that thing that you are travailing and that you are pushing through, okay? So no matter what you're battling, 
I know that we've got a, 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 a member of Wildflowers that is battling COVID, but you know what she says when she messaged me? She says, understand that I'm battling, but I know that, that the victory, I know that I am going to overcome this thing. So listen, you pray for me, you pray with me, but understand that you're not praying from a, a, a position of being anything less than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. And so that's what I give you this morning. Remember who you are, whose you are, and the position that you fight from. As you begin to read these scriptures, you will realize that, that this is a living word and it flows like rivers of living water. As we begin to talk the word that you're getting, it will then flow on to the next person. It is living. It is living and breathing inside of you, okay? And so it must be applied to our lives every single day. So let's go on and let's look at, um, let's continue looking at verse number four. It says, against you and you alone have I sinned. So when I get to that part, I say, Spirit of God, I know that I have sinned against you. Even when I don't think I sinned against you, I'm sinning against you. Why? Because I must operate in humility at all times. And because I've got this sinful nature, I don't intend to necessarily overlook you and your voice and your whisper, but there are moments when I do, so I dare not get on my high horse and think I've got it together just because my sister is wrestling in a particular area or my sister has not received or my brother for that matter has not received revelation about various passages of scripture. It doesn't mean that, that, that they're wrong. No, it means that perhaps God has not matured them into that place in the faith. And so if he reveals that to you, if in talking to, a, to one of your children and talking to anyone, if he allows you to see that you've got a sister or a brother in Christ that is not in a particular place, what will you do for them? He says, can I trust you to intercede? Can I trust you to bring this issue uh, before me? It is not that we will condemn. It is that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if you recall in the last uh, video that I made, I think the one right before this three, four days ago, what are we always doing? We're recognizing, okay? Sometimes we're not recognizing necessarily that thing that is within us, but if we're able to recognize that thing that is in our brother and sister, God is immediately trusting you to partner with him in prayer so that change can come in this person's life. Don't tell me that a business is, is doing a thing or or, or the boss is doing a thing, or my husband is doing a thing my, that, that, that just isn't right. My next question to you is how have you partnered with God for change to, to spring forth? You are that change agent. And that's part of what they mean when they say that God put you here to be an answer, not to contribute to the problem, but to be an answer. He knows that if I give Alyssa, uh, Alyssa, the, um, the, 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 this issue, he knows that she's going to partner with me and she's going to pray for me for this, pray with me for this sister that's a hot mess. So I'm going to introduce it into her space today because I know that she can handle, she can handle this person's issue. Okay. So yes, we do bear one another's burdens. Yes, we do undergird and support and exalt others. And according to the word of God, he says, what you should be doing is you should be toning it down, decreasing and building and exhorting and edifying and lifting your brother and your sister. And it's not because they always have it together. It is because God said so. And when you do that, you are building yourself up in the faith as well. You are sowing seeds. You are sowing that incorruptible seed. But oftentimes we like to sow the corruptible seed of negativity and calling a spade a spade and being a bit judgmental and self-righteous. Why? Because we know that we have our issues and at moments it makes us feel good. But God says, I can't increase in that type of environment. Okay. All right. Let me also say this. Um, it goes on and it says, I've done evil in your sight. We've talked about that. I'm doing evil in God's sight every single day. And you know how I'm doing evil in his sight? Because I'm sure that there may have been something that I missed. 
Was it intentional? No, it wasn't intentional. It was possibly an accidental oversight. Or it could be moments where he tells me, go up and give this person a word. And, and sometimes I second guess, you know? So God, anytime that I'm disobeying you, it is evil in your sight. Forgive me. Okay. All right. Let's jump on down to verse five. And then I'm, I'm going to stop there because I think you get the point. Verse five says, I was born a sinner. Yes. From the moment my mother conceived me. Um, verse five, six says, but you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom, even there before time became time. God says, I'm going to deposit some things that are in you. I, uh, I'm going to deposit some things in you. And as you walk with me, as you walk in me, I'm going to give you wisdom. Okay. He says, if any of you be lacking wisdom, ask me, I'm a God that I'm willing to free pour from heaven, free pour from heaven. Okay. I'm not going to measure and say, oh, you get just this, you know, little bit of wisdom or that. No, I'm going to give it to you. And then I'm going to give you situations that allow you to apply and walk uh, in wisdom. Okay. All right. Yes. And I was born a sinner, but just because I was born a sinner doesn't mean that I have to stay in a position of having a sinful nature. No, I am redeemed. And God says that I have given you the power. I have given you to the strength as you pray, as you walk in me to overcome the sinfulness of the world, to overcome your sinful ways. I will not, I will not put more on you than you can bear as you partner with me in prayer. Now, this is not a, I won't put more on you than you can bear as you stand alone apart from me. That's not how it works. No, no. Proverbs 3, 5, uh, 3 and 5 says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge God, partner with God, and he will direct your path. That's exactly what you're doing when he said, when you have these issues that come, God says, I don't mean for you to bear this apart from me, but you bear it as you abide, as you dwell, as you stand in me, as you abide in the secret place as outlined in Psalm 91. So it's like pieces of the puzzle. I know the word of God can be overwhelming, but there is absolutely no reason that we shouldn't be walking in the fullness and the power and the authority that God has given every single one of us. There is no Nadia that is greater than anyone that is under the sound of my voice this morning. None of us, none of us. God doesn't favor Daisy over Beverly. He doesn't favor Nadia over Belinda. That could be the furthest from the truth. Our value in God's eyes is priceless, every single one of us. And so as we engage one another, he says, I look for you to engage them with that mind and with that heart of Christ saying, I don't care what kind of physical impairment it looks like they have. I don't care what kind of psychological impairment it looks like they have. Last I look, I am high. I am exalted. I am seated on the throne and I am God. I should be served and revered and respected as such. Okay. So whew, God has just got me uh, this morning. Understand ladies that God has a work for you to do that only you can do. That's why you're here in the earth. He is looking for you to partner with him in full submission, obedience. So many of us are looking for purpose. Purpose doesn't come just bam, I have my purpose. Purpose comes as you live a life of obedience, a life of sacrifice, as you walk with God every single day. For many of us, he can't just tell you, oh, here, here's your purpose. Because you know what we'll do? We will run ahead of him or we will check out on him. Purpose is one of those things that's gradually deposited as you live a life for him. So where are your passions? What are your interests? What burns within you? And if you tell me that there is nothing that you just want to sit and 
and you know used to pick at my aunt play solitaire on the computer every day how is that bearing fruit for the kingdom how is it that the things that you get up that you rise to that they serve the kingdom of god because he says i expect you to be fitly jointed together compacted upon one another i expect you to join we are not to live a life in isolation we weren't created that way now if hurt has driven you that way then you need to go back and revisit the hurt but we are not to be living a life in isolation it is us coming together joining together on one accord in christ to do the work that he's called us to do and last i looked he said one can put a thousand to flight but two will put ten thousand to flight so who will you partner with who will you serve with who will you worship with for God's will to be done in this earth, not your will, but God's will. And never, never, never be motivated by your own will and try and take that will and, and ask God to make it his will. We don't get to retrofit God in this earth. We do get to start and end with him in all things. So I'm going to stop right there. I think you've got the point. Psalm 51 is an example that I use today of praying the scriptures. I also pointed you to Lord teach me to pray where she breaks down uh, 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 prayer, the components of learning to pray. Um, it, it's, it's good. It's good. When she talks about the Lord's prayer, you've got exercises in here. If you're not better today than you were yesterday, it's because you possibly choose not to. You are asleep at the wheel of your life. You choose. And understand that your life has different, different areas. Different areas of your life. There's something as a program that I'm writing now. And it's called Quad Fork. Well, I can't say too much about it. Let me stop right there. <laughs> but let me give you one thing. I have my laptop up. I want to share with you. All right. As you begin to look at your life, to grow and to pray in the various areas of your life, there's some things that I want you to consider. The first thing is looking at, and many people that are, that are uh, coaches, um, they say that, you know, I'm a coach. Okay. That's what they do. But they're asking you to consider and come up with your own answers. Don't look for people to give you the answers. Be willing to do the work and, 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 and have the excavation within your own spirit, within your own soul, that you are able to unearth the jewels that rest within you. Don't look for somebody else to do that. There is no greater investment than the one that you're willing to make in yourself. And so for these people that, that, that say that, you know, I'm a coach and I'm going to coach you into, you know, guide you. They're just basically trying to help you a, a, a initiate thoughts that, that take you out of that box to, to come and say, OK, wait a minute. You've implemented some some off, oftentimes psycho, psychological mechanisms that you're defending yourself in certain areas. And because you've uh, created like one is denial. Oh, my gosh. That's a, a psychological defense mechanism that we use. And when you stay within that box, there's a whole lot that's on the outside that you miss. Why? Because you've got yourself. You've cuffed yourself. And so these coaches, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you to move beyond the boundary of your thinking and to think big, to stretch yourself. OK, now, as you begin to, to, to pray, I want you to think about um, your health and your fitness. Think about your relationship with your job and your career. Think about your emotional health and your environment. What is my environment like? Are these areas conducive for growth? And I want you to begin to measure yourself. How am I any different with my health and my fitness yesterday than I was today? Because understand, it's the things that you do consistently every day that makes all the difference. You wonder why is it that I'm not getting the word of God and I feel lost and I'm ready to throw the towel in and I'm frustrated. It is staying the course, not because you feel like it, but because it's in you to have the stick to itiveness, if that is a word, my mother says that all the time, to stick it out. 
rate yourself. How am I growing socially? I know that, that people have hurt me and I really just don't want to be bothered with people. Why? You need people. I used to be an ignorant young lady and think, oh, I don't need anybody. I can do, I'm fine by myself. Got a good job, able to take care of myself. I don't need anybody. That's a lie. That is a lie from the adversary. And if he can keep you in isolation, you know what, what doesn't happen? Iron does not sharpen iron. Understand that people have their shortcomings. They're going to fall down. And when they fall down, when they hurt you, when they disappoint you, will you stomp them in their throat? Or will you talk to them? Will you open up? Will you communicate and say, do you have the maturity to say, I'm disappointed and I'm hurt. I expected A, B, C, and D. It fell short. What are your thoughts? It's called communication, you know? But what we do is we go and we build these triangles and we go and we tell so-and-so and then we tell so-and-so and then we tell so-and-so. And by the time we finish, we've got all these people's thoughts and inputs into something that we should have gone and possibly handled. Now, if you are going to get godly counsel, maybe from one person, then that's fine. I get that. I, I get it. But going and scattering it to everybody getting their thoughts and opinions about this issue that you are encountering between you and a sister or you and a brother, be careful how you invite so many other thoughts and ideas in to solving the problem. And you have to ask yourself, do I want to solve the problem or do I want to talk about it? What is my position? Okay. All right. Health and fitness, job and career, um, um, family and friends, from an intellectual perspective, uh, from, from a social perspective, begin to analyze your life in those different components. Ask God to move in those, in those areas, okay? He is waiting to move. All right, I'm going to pray us out of here. Um, and always know that believing in God is not an isolated event. It's not not isolated to a particular moment, believing and trusting God. It is a living, breathing organism, believing. Believing takes on a life in and of itself. It's not just a one-time action. It is an everyday getting up, being intentional, said that I know that I have a shortcoming when it comes to whatever, but Nadia has that and it's her strength. Let me partner with her and ask her, how are you building that thing? How are you working it? How are you exercising it? How are you growing it? Because that's what's happening when you partner with belief. When you say, I'm going to step into belief, it becomes the wings under your wing, uh, the, the wind under your wings. Okay. All right. Merciful God, I thank you and I praise you this morning. I praise you for allowing me to come and enter the presence of these ladies, and I thank you that your spirit is with us. Lord God, I speak life and wholeness over every single woman that is under the sound of my voice. Today is the day that her trajectory is changing. Whatever she did yesterday, it doesn't matter, oh God, because she stepped into new mercies of this day. I declare that she is walking in fullness. I declare that she is walking in overflow. I declare, oh God, God, that for every woman that does not understand the season that she is in uh, in her life, in some areas, oh God, she could be in a preparation season. In other areas of her life, oh God, she could be in an exodus, an exit season where she's 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 leaving and 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 transitioning from one thing to another. And as she does that, you are preparing her, you are building her, you are equipping her for everything that she needs. I speak death at this moment in the name of Jesus to fear, to doubt, to anything, oh God, that prevents them from walking in their call, from walking in their God-given assignment. Lord God, I don't care where they live. There is a work that needs to be done. There is a book that needs to be written. There is a class that needs to be taught. There, Lord God, is some understanding that they need to be giving and sharing. They don't get to be asleep, sleepwalking through their own lives, just sitting on the sideline waiting for something to happen. Lord God, equip them, 
to get, to jump in, to jump in in faith and say, even if I'm unsuccessful, Lord God, the lessons that I learned from not being successful is what I will need for the next level of success that you are taking them to. Understand, oh God, that there, help them to understand that there are jewels, there are rubies, there are sapphires, there are diamonds that are sitting in their belly, oh God, that are waiting to be Unearth. So give them the spirit of excavation that they begin to go within and they begin to search what is within them that they have to offer you. And when they offer you, they are often offering it to your children so that your kingdom is built up. Some of them are just meant to just partner with those that do have bigger visions and bigger dreams that they are to come in and to serve those people. But Lord God, without them, without them serving, without them saying, I don't care if I got to be a janitor, that's fine with me. I will clean the, the toilets of the kingdom of God and I will clean them to the best of my ability. There's absolutely nothing that I will not do to give God the glory that we don't begin to assign value to love to, to, to roles in the kingdom. I don't care if we're cleaning toilets. I don't care if we're mopping uh, the church. I don't care what's required. It is necessary, oh God, for your will to be done and for your word to be spread. So help us not to be so self-righteous and so prideful, battling those spirits that we think that we have to be front and center, oh God, in a place that you didn't necessarily call us to. Help us to realize that thing that you've called us to, to die to the old man, putting him off putting her off and to take on a new. I pray that we will continue to seek you while you wait, while you may be found. A day is coming, oh God. A day is coming when you will soon return. You will soon return. So help us to use our creative talents, our gifts, our abilities, oh God, that we just don't have our pom-poms always saying, rah, rah, read, do you see me? But we are willing to hunker down Hunker down, Lord God, and, and become one with you, come one with your word. Change lives today. Tear down strongholds today. Help these women to surrender their brokenness, brokenness, oh God, to you every day and to get up, to get up, oh God, and accomplish, accomplish, accomplish all that you've put in them to do. In Jesus' name, may you be glorified. May you be glorified. Amen, amen, amen. Ladies, I pray God's blessings upon you. I pray that everything that you do in this day, that you remember God has called you to something greater. And understand it's greater because it's assigned by God. Not because man has said, oh, it's, it's a great value. I, I notice how so much is springing up. It's springing up. All these new and different things are just springing up. You want longevity. You want longevity in whatever God calls you to do. Okay. Is there anything else before I get off of here? Bessie, yes, hallelujah, and thank you, Lord. Alisa, in Jesus' name, I hear you. Daisy, yes, in Jesus' name. It is a pleasure to see y'all. Teresa Reed, oh, good morning, sis. It is a pleasure to see you. I thank you so much. Take hold of everything that God has put in you. And if you doubt in any way, don't stay there. Just acknowledge that I'm doubtful, God. Acknowledge it and move on. All right. We will be talking about the uh, parable of the seed and the sower. We've got a Zoom meeting today. If any of you decide that you want to attend that Zoom meeting, inboxes, inbox me. You um, um, are welcome to join. All right. Have a blessed, full, prosperous day in the Lord. All right. Bye-bye.